Well, hello and welcome. Good morning, Africa. It's Breakfast Central on <laughs> News Central. All right, and today being Thursday is the 15th day in the month of July of 2021. In this side of Africa, West Africa, Nigeria, Lagos to be precise, we've had quite a wet Thursday. But notwithstanding, that is not going to stop us from bringing you the brightest, most colorful show on the continent of Africa. All right, good morning once again. My name is Olisa Chukuma. And I am Oluchi in Obong. Well, so much to bring to you today in the world of news, politics, entertainment, sports, and the latest, not forgetting trend waves, social media, and whatever you when it comes to the continent of Africa and indeed the and beyond. Uh, we'll take a quick breather, and when we come back, we'll look at the headlines and get into the show proper. <laughs> Well, hello there. Welcome. Good morning to you. It's Breakfast Central on News Central with Olisa and Oluchi today, Thursday, the 15th day of July 2021. Let's start with a look at the headlines for today. We'll start in Nigeria, where Senate set to pass Electoral Act Amendment Bill. And we'll be going to Kenya, where the missing boys have been found and police have found bodies, arrest suspects. Also in Nigeria, 15 million trillion naira infrastructure company to start operation in quarter three of 2021. And we will be giving you a review of the newspaper headlines for today. Plus, the trend waves all across Africa right here on Breakfast Central. All right, still on Breakfast Central, on New Central, and we are looking at the newspapers this morning. And we're starting with the very first paper, looking at Daily Trust in Nigeria. And the Daily Trust has quite a lot to say this morning. Um, looking at the Daily Trust, it says, Again, bandits, IPOP militia on the prowl. Kogi Monarch abducted, businessman killed in Bauchi, three policemen, football club chair, manager shot dead in Anambra. It goes on and on and on that's from the daily trust this morning if you look at that paper that's talking about insecurity in nigeria also the daily trust national assembly committee empowers INEC to decide on e-transmission of results we also have this as one of our top stories this morning you need to stay tuned for more on that um FEC approves 309.9 billion naira road contract for Dangote. You will also see this picture here of, uh, you can see little kids. Uh, these are villagers who scoop black engine oil. Wow, black engine oil from a trailer that crashed in the community along Abuja Lokoja Road. Now these are little children. You have women also who were scooping engine oil. Um, quite a dangerous uh, act, I must confess. Uh, that's, uh, you, you, highly, you, highly. You wonder highly how we get reduced risky. to this level. It's, it's really <sighs> out, outrageous. All right, uh, from Sorry. Daily Trust in Nigeria, let's go to New Era in uh, Namibia to see what they have uh, this morning. So, President Gangengop empathizes with Cyril Ramaphosa. Uh, we know that there's recent protests, and about 72 people reported dead since the uh, the protests and li rioting and looting started uh, a couple of days ago. Also, CEO vows to deal with stubborn star. Find out more on the front page of uh, the uh, new era in Namibia. And there's a picture of the CEO there. Why is he vowing to deal with them? And what's the quote in quote? Stubborn meaning. Find out more. Also, talking about South Africa Namibia relations as South African Foreign Minister visits uh, the uh, uh, country. There's uh, lots of empathizing. Ramaphosa. Also, uh, Kajavivi, Jab may have uh, saved my life. Find out more also on the front page of the new era in Namibia. Now we move to South Africa. We are looking at the Sowetan papers this morning. Uh, and of course, we can see this uh, picture here. People are picking out. This is, this is after the riot and the chaos that has been happening in South Africa. Today is day six. Um, and it says, light at end of dark scary tunnel. Mbutu claws essay back from the brick. Residents club together to clean up mess left behind by rioters while others continue to guard the last malls and businesses standing. Door-to-door um, -door raids and civilian roadblocks 
to recover looted goods. You have this in the pages 2, 3, and 4 from the Soweto newspaper this morning. And page 2, Zulu King calls for peace and calm. You have all of this from the Soweto paper this morning. All right, there'll be more on that later. The protests and rioting and looting in South Africa. But let's go straight back to Nigeria uh, with uh, the punch uh, this morning. And it's all about uh, debt servicing rises and it says gulped 72 percent of the federal government revenue says debt servicing to revenue ratio jumped up from 54.66 percent in 2019 to about 72 percent in 2020 and the likes of uh, professor party told me also quoted there says uh, ratio high because of indiscipline we may lose infrastructure to creditors he says uh although there's uh, a picture uh a spread of pictures about uh, criminals uh, paraded by uh, the police so uh uh, uh, quite a number of them, I think, at the police uh, headquarters in Abuja, uh, Lagos State Command, I, I suspect, in Lagos, uh, Ikeja, I suspect. And it says, we suspect conspiracy in Super TV boss murder, mm -hmm. says CP, as a police, uh, senior police officer. And they paraded over a thousand suspects paraded. I hope it's not a uh, thousand three hundred and twenty suspects uh, in connection with the, you murder. know, the murder. No, I, I suppose it's something else. But uh, he says they suspect conspiracy in the super TV murder. Well, who would have not? These days, it's almost like a trial by media circus uh, when it comes to that case and the alleged, uh, you know, uh, suspect in the form of Chidima. All right, also on the front page, you have at the top there, it says, Senate upholds AGES report orders 300 uh, naira billion refund from MPA, BPE, and 57 other agencies. And there's lots more all around uh, the uh, front page of the uh, punch newspaper for today, 15th July, Thursday, 2021. And Alyssa, in the papers, we have something about Unilag because we know Uni the University of Lagos has been shut down um, and means the level four coronavirus that has happened um, just yesterday. This information just broke out yesterday where all the students in the school, in the school mm. were asked to vacate the premises and the school premises is on lockdown as we speak. Mm. But of course, you will get more stories than that um, as we go on the program later today. Uh, that's it on the newspaper review this morning. It's still the 15th day in the month of July 2021, but it's now time for our top stories. All right, so it's day six of the protest uh, looting uh, in South Africa uh, has been estimated that about 72 people have been killed so far. President Cyril Ramaphosa uh, says an expanded deployment of the military is now being addressed in response to the looting and violence. Now, according to the presidency, the comments were made during a meeting with the leaders of political parties represented in parliament about the unrest that has killed at least 72 people. They were also briefed by the defense, um, the defense, comp the defense organization, the defense minister, I beg your pardon, and army chief about Monday's deployment of soldiers to stop looting at key commercial, commercial centers in KwaZulu-Natal and Guteng provinces. Now, the violence was sparked by the jailing last week of his predecessor, which is the ex-president Jacob Zuma, for content of court. All right, so there's uh, pictures and images for you in the last uh, 24 hours uh, in uh, Durban and also different parts of Soweto. Uh, there's police firing guns at uh, protesters and looters. So it's almost like South Africans against South Africans. There was talks about rubber bullets as at uh, Monday it was confirmed that Two and uh, two uh, thousand five hundred soldiers were deployed, and looks like they want to deploy more yeah. soldiers to the streets. And that's the uh, pictures of uh, shopping malls that have been looted and raided. It's completely a horrific event. It's yeah. been described as the worst since uh, the apartheid since protests in, in the 1990s. 1990s. Yes, right, right. And looking at the situation, looking at the number of the properties, the businesses that have um, been been attacked, and as we speak in South Africa, in those regions especially, there's been shortage of bread. Uh, shortage of fuel. Um, I mean, so it's been a, a serious situation that has been going on. And today is day six wow. um, with, with what is happening over there. I mean, you can see people literally, literally carrying yeah. out things. I mean, I saw one that had a child yeah. who was thrown from a burning building down yeah, in, and we Durban. Had, in Durban. And we had good people who were able to catch that toddler. That was a toddler at most two or three years old. Mm. A, a very sad situation happening as we speak. All right, so we'll continue to give, bring you more details uh, with our correspondents in South, South Africa with the situation as regards the protest, looting, ah, and robbery 
uh, going down in different parts of the country. Now, away from that, let's take you to Kenya, where detectives uh, in uh, Buruburu are holding the main suspect behind the kidnap and murder of two boys who disappeared from the city estate. Now, Charles Opindo uh, Bala, who's aged 13, went missing on June the 30th this year, while Junior Matuku uh, Musayaka, aged 12, disappeared on the 7th of July. That's a couple of days ago. Now, the police on Tuesday uh, said that they have arrested a 20-year-old named Masten Milimo uh, Wanjala in connection with the disappearance of the two boys, after which he led detectives to a thicket where he had dumped their body. It's very sad. Now, the suspect, who is currently being interrogated, has confessed to killing and burying more than 10 children in shallow graves in different parts of Nairobi. And detectives are already working on verifying this claim and they will accompany him to the different locations he has mentioned to see if they will unearth the bodies of other missing children. <sighs> it's, it's quite a sad one, but um, it, mm. seem, it seems the, the police and security forces in, um, in Kenya now are doing their best to ensure that people like this do not go unpunished mm. at the end of the day. Uh, the suspect also featured uh, in the uh, morning papers of a Kenyan paper daily saying how he killed 13 other children. children. Quite a sad one. Still Breakfast Central, more top stories right here. This time we're coming to Nigeria, West Africa. The Senate has passed the National Electoral Offences Commission bill, which, uh, if assented by the President, Mohamed Buhari, will be charged with investigating electoral offences and prosecuting electoral offenders. Uh, now, the bill, which comes uh, up uh, for the third reading uh, during Tuesday's plenary session, will ensure that, when established, the National Electoral uh, Offences Commission shall have the powers to appoint and maintain investigators, prosecutors and experts to prosecute electoral offenders. And when it comes to electoral offenders, there's only one thing that comes to my mind, Oluchi. Mm. And what ballot box? Box people <laughs> and box snatching. Now, according to the chairman of the committee on INEC in the person of Senator Kabiru Gaya, the creation of the commission is critical because the Independent National Electoral Commission clearly, according to him, lacks the needed human capacity to prosecute electoral offenses committed across Nigeria's 119,973 polling units. Well, we have now new central chief researcher Abdul Latif Ahmed joining us this morning on this. We also have Ahmedin over the phone who will be joining us on this conversation as well. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Aluchi. Good morning, Aluchi. Morning, Amadine. Uh, good to have you live from um, uh, the nation's capital, Abuja. Uh, Amadine, we have seen the controversy surrounding this bill and the delay in amending the Electoral Act as promised in the first uh, quarter of the year, which you pointed out well, sometime in this program. Now, it's coming late, and what Nigerians expected to see uh, in the bill uh, to achieve is nowhere to be found. Now, uh, what's at play here this time, in your opinion? Okay, first of all, this is a this year, uh, victory, uh, victory for uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Remember that since, 2000, since 2015, INEC has been pushing for an Electoral Offenses Commission. In fact, after the 2015 general elections, INEC had come up to say that it had about, it had over 900 incidences during the 2015 elections and out of that not up to 15 persons have been prosecuted nigerians worked in all of the uh, uh watch videos circulating on social media of the violence that rocked the 2015 elections some staff of the commission were even killed but yet these perpetrators always go unpunished so the fact that the National Assembly, after six years, has finally been able to come up with a document that just like you said, if accepted to by the President, will ensure that those manipulate who unleash violence on innocent electorates will go unpunished. 
then it's a big, big, big win for the country. Right. Amadine, um, now looking at the situation of things, especially when it concerns this electoral bill, this is not the first time. I mean, during the, the tenure of the late uh, President, uh, President Yeradwa, this was brought up. I mean, it was, it was even looked into during the tenure of former, Good Luck, former President Goodluck Jeanette, and it was also brought up with, um, with terms and conditions that it will be processed and it will be put into action within 48 hours. And now... We're bringing it during the tenure of um, President Mohamed Buhari. We understand that the bill has been laid once again before the Ninth Assembly, uh, and the passage is expected to happen today as we speak. Tell us, what do you think? How will today even play out? The last question again, how? Well, how do you think it will all play out now uh, with this, uh, the uh, Electoral Offenses Act? Well, I think that's what I'll call it. You know, to a large extent, politicians have frustrated the process. Mm. Members of the National Assembly had refused to even look at what it was muted to in the past. From 2015, Ireland started a campaign that did not even yield fruit till the 2019 general elections. Now that the, the has finally been able to look at Ireland's recommendations and have come up with a big. Definitely not all politicians will be happy because uh, many of them, those who benefit from the government, perpetrated during elections. But at least for those who have lost loved ones during elections, for those who have relatives who have been maimed, it should be a victory for them. So whatever it is, it has been placed before the Senate. Whatever it is, it has been placed and it is hoped that by today it will be a thing of the past. All right, we'll continue to monitor the situations there, Amadine. Away from that, we understand that you're uh, not in Abuja, but actually uh, in Kanu, uh, where the, for the commissioning of the railway there. Tell us what's going on. Well, uh, the, the Kanu Kaduna rail line is part of the Kanu Lagos rail line from uh, the. Uh, the Sergeant Johnson uh, train station is expected to terminate in Kano. It's been a project that has been part and part of the real reform plan. Uh, what happened was that the federal segment, the federal government, has been constructing the rail in segments. The Lagos Ibadan is already completed. The Abuja Kaduna is already completed. Now the next phase is to ensure that the, the train moves from Kaduna to Kano. So today will be a flag of, of construction. It is hoped after the flag of ceremony today that construction can commence immediately. All right, Ahmedine, we will want to want to ask, and a lot of people are begging for this answer in terms of the security. How secure will the railway system be moving from Kadu, from Kano to other parts of Nigeria? Are there any plans by the government or even the state government to ensure that people can feel safe traveling by rail? Rail is one of the secure, most secure means of transport. Remember, that it's very, very difficult to have a moving train. That's why the federal government is investing on rail transportation, seeing that it can, it can increase uh, uh, passenger uses and goods. Actually, uh, the profit in uh, building rails is not really in that transport. Though to a large extent, it relieves uh, passengers. Passengers can, uh, to a larger extent, have a sign of guarantee that they are not afraid of any accident on the road uh, during the trip. Remember that just uh, Lagos Ibadan has started almost how many weeks ago? The federal government is already saying that as of this year, they had about 42,000 passengers. That is a system that is very well operating at 50% of its capacity. The last time there were only two trips between Lagos. And money and trains. So by the time the first increases it to about six or eight, then you are going to be talking about two hundred thousand passengers mm. in in just two months. And, and the, the rail was designed to be able to ferry eight million passengers per year. So if you put passenger uh, price at one side as a good, you are not going to see certain effects where. It will, it will tremendously reduce 
cost of things in the market because right. it will be much much cheaper to be a guarantee of safety and then it will reduce the on Nigerian roads. All right, uh, thank you very much, Amadine Uyi, our uh, Abuja correspondent and Buri Chief, but now live in Kano to witness that commissioning of the rail uh, line there. Stay safe, Amadine, and we'll get, we'll love to see pictures uh, when you get back to base. Thank you, Mr. Chief. All right. Uh, Interesting. Really uh, interesting. And you're looking at Kano Kaduna. Now, mm. let's not forget, Kaduna has been in uh, the forefront in a, a lot of insecurity situation in the mm. country. And that's why people are quite curious as to know the, the things or the, the uh, what we put in place mm. to ensure that goods, people's lives, properties, mm. or uh, goods as it were, are safe at the end of, and they get to their destination. Yeah, it, 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 is quite, it is quite safe. You don't want to start, you know, alluding or thinking about perhaps, you know, this band is trying to attack you know, railway installations uh, that will be there uh, we don't want that we don't pray for that at all but we'll continue to follow that one and uh, perhaps uh, get to, to see Amadine on a uh, mm -hmm. train ride mm -hmm. right more top stories right here on breakfast central It's still in Nigeria where the anti-graft agency EFCC has launched an app to boost the war against corruption. Now the Eagle Eye app as it's called, which is the first of its kind in Nigeria, is expected to ease reporting of financial crimes by Nigerians and ensure the whistleblower's confidentiality. Wow. Now executive chairman of the agency, that's uh, Abdul Rashid Bawa, says the application will present a whole new experience for whistleblowers. Uh, while urging citizens to take advantage of the app, Bawa says it will complement existing uh, filing, uh, filing complaints about financial crimes. We understood the problem of uh, most of the North people tend to launder their process of crime through real estate. And Nigerians out there are aware about these properties, are aware about uh, who the owners are. Now with this app, you know, you can easily take a picture of uh, that property or uh, seeing where these people are committing this cyber crime and report it. You know, that is one of the advantages that we have in here without necessarily you, you know, uh, you know writing it. And again, generally on, 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 on financial crimes, we, we are not everywhere and we don't tend to, we don't intend to be everywhere. We have 14 zonal offices as of today and the headquarters. You know, uh, if we did not even reduce the number, we don't have the intention of uh, having more additional offices. So because we are not everywhere, we are not in every local government, uh, we are not in every state of the federation. So people out there can easily, you know, write, uh, um, uh, um, you know, complain and send to us. All right, that was the executive chairman of EFCC, um, and he was talking about the Eagle Eye app. It's a welcome development, if you ask me, Olisa, and it's a long time coming. We've been expecting something like this as rather um, as against going in person to report um, mm. set or to lay certain complaints about what mm. you see. And just as I said, the whistleblower's confidentiality mm. is very important. So it looks like the EFCC are encouraging whistleblowing now in, in, in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. EFCC has been quite in the forefront of the corruption fight a couple of years, not just for the Obasanjo administration, the late Yaradu and also uh, Good Luck administration. Uh, it's not been long since he got the job, Abdul Rashid right. Bawa. They talked about uh, him being a quite a, a young, young you know, uh, fellow, yeah, young chap uh, to say, and also having experience with security agencies. So that was him speaking. Uh, we can take you through perhaps the process. I want to believe that the app is both on Play Store and iOS. But let's take you through uh, the process of perhaps if you've gotten it. So uh, corruption destroys the core values of Nigeria. So that's the front page, I think, of the Eagle Light. Woo! Uh, quite a way. Uh, He's okay. talking about the vision and the mission yeah. statement I mean, of, of EFCC. You also have the phone numbers for you to call. Mm. Um, and for anybody who is downloading the app, this is one of the first things you will see. And you also have the next icon mm. where you click on and it takes you to the next part of the app. All right. So if, you were, if this was a phone, this was the first thing you see. And there you have it, the eagle eye. It looks like it's watching me. Oh, my God. Mm. Is it watching you too? Right. Okay. Look at uh, report case slash uh, incidents. incidents. Okay. So basically, this is the app for... Whistleblower. And there's a note up there that says that Eagle Eye does not replace uh, the, uh, you know, conventional way of substituting uh, petitions uh, in... Uh... Submitting petition. It okay. is, however, 
a means of reporting financial crimes as they happen. Period. Okay. Wow. Okay. So let's go into it this time. Report case. So there's an option. Allow Eagle Eye to access photos, uh, media yeah, lossy wow. on your phone. Okay. Yeah. You want to go allow. Uh, so, and once you allow it, I think it gives you details. You can scroll down. There's a place to put a picture, location of details. Uh, you know, look the state. It also shows you the state wherever you're, you're finding your complaint from your address. Hmm. I mean, the, inf the informant's details, which is optional. If you hmm. want to put it, you can put your full full name, your phone number, and um, also you can report the. You can give a description of the report. Basically, hmm. you have a place where you can describe it. And once you're done filling all of that information, you click on the submit button and it takes you I, i'm really curious uh, full name phone number address information informat Informat address, address. Mm. but it's, it's optional uh, i mean you can see there's clearly are you sure? is it it's optional? clearly op yeah it is optional i mean informat i don't details. think you i don't think you might be allowed to submit if you don't fill in your informa informat address oh <laughs> now that's what you, it, it is optional okay. i mean and it tells you here to please select at least one image. So you need to upload an image. And we're looking at some the reviews. reviews. All right. Oh, but... the reviews. We have quite a number of reviews. Um, one of them says, this is my maker, Aremo. This is great. God bless this idea and the team that put this together. Now, Nigeria can be rid of corrupt criminals at the social class, be it politician or whoever. Now, it appears Nigeria is getting more serious about this fight against corruption without fear or favor. But my concern is some of the real corrupt um, but powerful elements and cabals may be untouchable. Well, there's always a very big concern in this country called Nigeria. Anyways, kudos to you guys at ESCC. Tim Bauer, I hail your good work. And there's Definitely. another comment there from Usain Ekanem who goes, uh, want to fight corruption in Nigeria? Check out top security agencies. However, uh, starts with defense. defense. Oh, so throwing wow. shade there. And the likes of Yakubu Jonathan also uh, reviewing. So that's a bit of a review uh, on the uh, I Play Store Resort. for people downloading the app and checking out uh, what is there. So the EFCC are going digital. So yeah, mm -hmm. with your smartphone, smart device, you can download the Eagle I app. And this is not an advertisement for them. This nah. is like, it's like, okay. We also have to do that. Because but, well, listen, you know, I'm also looking forward to when our electoral process will also be digital. Mm. I mean, when we don't we don't have to carry ballot boxes and we hear ballot boxes, ballot boxes are being snatched because that's one of the reasons why mm. we have this electoral bill amendment because it is supposed to make it easier, mm. more transparent and more accountable for all Nigerians come 2023. Are we there yet? Yeah. And it goes for not just for public, but also for private enterprises. So which means even within private organizations, people can report... Cases, cases, suspected cases. And, and I think uh, there's an option for you to uh, allow for pictures and photos and evidence. documents. You so you to have to, evidence yeah, well. evidence based uh, reportage and not just uh, whistleblowing for whistleblowing sake. It, it, Nigeria is interesting, especially when it comes to EFCC matters. Yeah, it never ends, but of course, this is a good one for Nigeria. Well, we're still on Breakfast Central or News Central. Coming up next on the program. I will take you across Africa to look at the latest trend wave, uh, well, from different social media platforms. And we'll be talking about CBN as 15 trillion Naira infrastructure company to start operations. And what programs to watch much later on this station, News. Just to watch in Breakfast Central on New Central TV. It's quite an exciting day it has been. But don't forget, you can still follow us on all, all social media, on Facebook or on Instagram, and you can stream live on YouTube. Now, catch us live on Star Times, channel 274, one too, channel 23, and you can always follow us on different platforms. All right, different platforms, including the one you know that has been <laughs> clipped, literally. The bird cannot tweet. 
Right, let's talk about some business this time. And we're still in Nigeria. Now, the governor of the country's central bank, as Godwin Emefile himself, has revealed that uh, 15 trillion Naira Infrastructure Corporation of Ni uh, Nigeria, that's uh, Infraco PLC, will uh, commence full operation by the third quarter of 2021. Now, this is as the federal government has approved the selection of uh, four asset managers uh, for the infrastructural funds. Now, Emefile made this disclosure at the investors webinar organized by the Bureau of Public Enterprises. Now, in conjunction with the Nigerian Exchange Group and the Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission. Now, what does this all imply for the average Nigerian? We have our business desk editor, Naz Agbalaya. Naz, good morning to you. Welcome to the program. Uh, before we go into the latest revelations by CBN governor himself, Godem Efele, uh, we just took a story about CBN, uh, no, EFCC, EFCC, apologies, and their new whistleblower app. I really wonder uh, how this really play out in terms of private businesses and corruption. Good morning, guys. Well, it's a wonderful innovation which uh, the EFCC has uh, brought uh, into play. To your question, it's a good thing for business because now you know that if someone defrauds you, you don't need to go physically to lodge a complaint. You can do it remotely on your phone or on your desktop. It's a good thing. It's, it will bring more confidence uh, from foreign investors that yes, you can, that Nigeria is becoming saner uh, by the day. Now back to the main issue of the day about the infrastructure front. Yes, uh, 15 trillion naira is being sought. Well, uh, as it is now, this, did someone just whistle? Yes, it's a lot of money. <laughs> uh, you can repeat, the, why don't you repeat the figure I whistle? 15 trillion. <laughs> trillion. 15 trillion. <laughs> well, it is a lot, but truly we do need this. Uh, we, over the past uh, couple of years, uh, Nigeria has been uh, doing lots of borrowing because we don't have adequate infrastructure. Now, uh, earlier on, Amadi reported about a new, uh, a new real project uh, happening in the Northwest. Now, this will cost money. Now, we do know that the, the Abuja Kaduna one has been done, the Lagos Ibadan has been done. We need to connect the whole nation called Nigeria, not just by rail, but even by road transport. And these things cost money. Now, this is just a part of it. Now, uh, across Lagos now, you do know that, that there's, there are fiber optic cables being laid. Now, this would boost internet connectivity. A good thing which we need, um, earlier on the show, uh, Oluchi mentioned something about uh, uh, Nigeria being able to vote remotely. Or uh, do you need to go to a, a ballot box uh, and turn printing, all that stuff. Now, this can only be done if we have adequate infrastructure. Mm. That is wonderful internet. You do know how the internet is across uh, Sub-Saharan Africa right now. Now, the best services are in uh, the East, I'll say uh, Kenya and South Africa, because they have fiber optic cable infrastructure. Now, with this, you have wonderful service. Now, this is one of the reasons why uh, the CBN and all its partners, uh, NGX, Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission, are coming together with uh, the four companies that they have brought to raise this capital. With this, Nigeria will be able to, say, improve our infrastructure deficit. Well, of course, in the next uh, couple of years, uh, we'll have a Nigeria of our dreams. Mm -hmm. Right, Nas. Now, looking at this money, this is not um, two cobo. It's not 10,000 naira. <laughs> this is trillions. I think we've left the million and the billions. We're now on the level of trillions. Um, who do we have to hold responsible in terms of accountability on how these funds will be effectively utilized? Mm. The four asset managers that, you know, have been selected mm. by the federal government. Yes, yes. Wait a second. Now, these uh, companies, that's uh, AIM, uh, Afri Invest, and the rest, they are meant to raise the money. Okay. Get me right, to raise the money. Now, to encourage them, the federal government has a seed fund of 1 trillion naira. So they are now to raise the 14 trillion naira to ensure that these wonderful projects having uh, improved power supply, using more renewable, because when we use more renewable, we get carbon credits. Now, uh, the UN and other agencies uh, pay countries, particularly in Africa, if you are able to do this. Now, many of our, see, our cousins in East Africa are already reaping wonderful rewards from this. Rwanda in Kenya in question. Because they are using more renewable energy, they are, uh, they are improving their carbon footprints, uh, sorry, footprints. So Nigeria can tap into this also. 
So part of this money, when it's used in that aspect, will get part of the money back mm. as some sort of rebate. And also, the money can pay for itself. Of course, you know that when there's a regular power supply, that will boost creativity. That will boost the small and middle class entrepreneur who can't do his or her business, even at home or even at a small a shop. Mm. Now, with this, everyone will be able to pay their, uh, their bills regularly. Mm. It's, it's a done <laughs> deal, I'd say. Uh, nice. Nigeria will really... Why are you shaking your head? No, I, I really don't want to be a pessimistic because this no, no, is not no, the first it's... time. This is not the first time that we're, hear, we're hearing of renewable energy. This is not the first time we're, we're hearing or we know of other options in terms of power generation. But it seems to be, we seem to need technocrats from astronauts, which country, which planet, <laughs> Mars, well, to get the, this the good, done. The we have astronauts it. amongst us, really. Yeah, the good is about this sort because we know that this is infra, which is basically for infrastructural development, which we know that we have a zero deficits in terms of where we are in Nigeria compared to our ratio of our population. And it's starting from the uh, quarter, third quarter, which we're already on, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken. Yes, this yes, is July. Are, yes. All right. So we'll see how it all goes. Thank you very much, uh, our business desk editor, uh, Naz Agbalaya, for giving us the latest of this new revelation with, from the CBN governor on the 15 trillion Naira infra code. Well, Great to be here, guys. All right. We'll see you once again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so it's still Breakfast Central on News Central. We bring you the news, the top stories, the, the happy, the sad, the global, and sometimes the bizarre. Mm -hmm. We brought you something on Tuesday uh, regarding, or is it a Monday, but a pastor who... Predicted, did some yeah, form of prediction. He, and got, he, he pretty much got it wrong. Pretty much, England he 150% got it wrong. Yeah, and he's a prophet. <laughs> and we have you know? a follow-up on that, on who... Okay, who said what, what was that? Who said what? Who said what? <laughs> All right, check this Let's out. <laughs> go. Today, and then, England will beat Italy. England never found much enough for four, four, four. I'll say it again. My God. That, is, that, is, that is the work of a prophet. I don't know if what you, you keep saying what God is saying. You must work. You hear what I said? Hi, Papa. I said England. I said England. England. I've seen it on YouTube, everywhere. Make a social media. England. England. Go win the cup. To start with, let me put this on record. Issues, uh, you know, centering on religion are very sensitive here in Ghana. And until now, where, you know, the masses are calling out these prophets in their own words, fake. And actually, this is not the first time we've had a prophet, Bedou Kobe, you know, coming up with prophecies. He even talked about the U.S. elections where he said Donald Trump will win. He talked about the Ghana elections, the 2020 elections, and now came into football. And so, when I looked at all those, you know, comments after the EU finals, people were like, what is the correlation between prophet and football? Like, I mean, how, why would you be in your lane and do your whatever church stuff? And why are you not into football, you know? And so right after the Euro finals, you could see social media, he was trending actually. He was actually trending, number one. And people calling him out, why are the congregation still going to that church? Why would they want to be, you know, lied to and all that, you know? So I feel he has really availed himself for people to just chastise him, calling him out. And I, I even saw a comment that, you know, they really tabulated all the fake prophecies he made. And some that really come to fusion at all, you know. So, but what what really Ghanaians really want is that these prophets should detach themselves from God. Yes, God can reveal to you another, but some they also feel some are you know your sentiment. If God really revealed to you like the way you were so confident in the video, because we, there's, there's evidence to it, he was so confident about it. God says this and that. So what that means now is God is lying. And that is what Ghanaians... All right, so that's the Ghanaian jo mm, journalist, mm, uh, George Kwanin, mm. giving us the latest updates on mm. uh, our dear prophet Kobe, who clearly got that prediction between Italy and England wrong. Oh, you forgot to add that he got other predictions prior to that yeah. one. That of uh, um, Donald Trump, even his country, the elections that happened in 2020, he, and he, he keeps coming back saying more things with his full chest and he gets congregation. Yeah. He keeps following after 
back to back ban back to back on true prophecies well, so why I, I really want to wonder why you know he had to go that far to predict it it's a sunday service or whatever service uh, you've got so much to talk about in terms of salvation religion like, mm. but he took like mm. full almost two minutes and said i'm saying it all over youtube right now mark it as a prophet England will win the cup, you know, <laughs> and look at the backlash it's caused. <laughs> oh, well, you know, I mean, when it comes to uh, things like this, we will always get them on Breakfast Central. But conversations do not just end on dailies and television alone. In fact, these days, most conversations get the most heat uh, on, on the social media space. Now, let's find out what's trending across the African continent with Amal. Thanks for having me today. All right, Amal. Uh, good morning to you. It's time uh, for Trendwave. We've uh, left Ghana and the, <laughs> well, the factor that made some betting people get it wrong. So what's yeah. trending this time? Is it Nigeria? Yes, let's start off with Nigeria. Now, I'm going to start off with a controversial post, if I may actually say, from one beautiful Nigerian lady, um, where she stated, and I quote, I, Ola Jumoke, the second daughter of my father, is not going to share or foot any bills in marriage I will support where I deem fit, but my dear husband will take care of me and our bills 100%. This or leave me. Now, yeah. I, for me, it's the, it's the boldness for me. It's the confidence for me. It's everything for me, to be honest. Now, social media has gone crazy over this post. With some people, some people are in support of it, saying that, you know, a woman's job is to just keep a home and a man's job is to provide for the home. So a woman has no business, you know, doing all of that. Well, some other people have pulled out the feminist card saying, you know what, if you guys want equality in jobs and everything, you should also want equality in paying for the bills at home. And the rest, just like me, who are not really yet married, can't really comment. But oh. uh, me, other people are saying she doesn't know what she's talking oh. about since oh. she's not married. Oh. All right, mm. is it your okay in question? Is she a celebrity? Uh, no, nah. she's just a, a, a very vocal Regular person. Girl. Random, and the tweet and the, the comments on social media got lots of, you know, likes. Oh, that's and, okay. 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 Clearly. She's, Clearly. Up. she's still single. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is the lady in question. Oh, my, oh, oh my God. Okay, so notes to... Notes there to all Olaju the uh, eligibles out there. Now, Olaju Moke has made it clear that uh, I will support as she deems fit. That's what she's saying. But my dear husband will take care of me and my bills 100%. This or leave me. And there's a picture uh, with that. Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> Olisa, now I need to ask you this question. Well, if, you I mean, had, if, if yourself and Olaju Moke happen to be together on a date one day and she brings this up, will you give her the high five, like 100% yeah? Or you look and say, uh-uh, to well, the left? It, it's hard to get me on a date, first of all, you oh. know, on a one on one case. Uh, I, I tend to be a bit premium. Wow. <laughs> But I guess I guess she's gonna find her target market one day. But heading on to back to Ghana where you guys were actually. Um, we have the popular actress Moshe Butong who has been popular for being, you know, a famous, very African looking lady, curvy and you know, beautiful and quite controversial in the recent past. Um, she came up a few days ago, a few weeks ago actually, to state that she has found Christ, which is great for her. And a few days ago, she was found sitting around people talking about how she has sold her Range Rover and she has emptied her bank account and she does not have any money on her. She claimed to be telling the people that, didn't you see, I'm about to order for, you know, for a cab service. And she's like, I'm happier now than when I was when I had all these things. And she, the one thing that I find very strange that I lost... One of the things that I find very strange that a lot of celebrities don't usually do is she talked to the girls and she was trying to tell these girls that, you know, I've misled you and, you know, most of the times that you guys do these things to impress people on social media, she confessed to having done some illicit things and also having relationships with married people. And, you know, she said that some of these people, you know, you end up with these people and they take more from you, something about your grace and all of that. So she was really talking to the ladies and just talking about how happy she is with basically nothing right now and i think it's, it's very strange but we, i can only honestly wish her the best going forward okay. it's not easy it's not easy at all some go and some die some of these girls go and they die because of the wrong men they sleep with they take out our glory 
you know they take our glory. God, God when God, God created us, God has given us all of us wealth and power. All these men do is to sleep with us and take our glory and give us peanuts. And give us peanuts. All the monies they give to us are things that yeah, 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 Juma and you know. Wow. Um, like I said, I can only wish her the best. I mean, it's her spiritual journey, but you know, it's been trending for a while because she has been on the front line. She's one of Africa's biggest celebrities, if I may say. Mm. So I biggest? think uh, um, 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 that may be debatable. Mm. You know. mm. But you know, Amal, she said she <laughs> emptied the bank account and she sold a Range Rover. So where did that money go? I, I'm just wondering. You know, that, that's why. <laughs> so I'm trying to. Uh, 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 maybe she us. gave it out. I mean, uh. she has not stated where the money is. Yeah, oh, but okay. anyway, that's all we have on today's trend. But thank you so much for having me. All right, thank you very much, Amal, <laughs> for the latest when it comes to the trends uh, from Ghana. Ah, we went out. Yeah, you know, uh -huh. it never stops, right? Thank you very much, Amal, once again. <laughs> all right, uh, so up next will be sports right here on Breakfast Central. Okay, away from the trend waves, uh, let's go straight to sports. Good news for South Africa's rugby team, the Springboks. But I'm not sure which, whether they want to call in the Springboks because they talked about South Africa A yesterday. They defeated that team there, the British and Irish Lions, 17 to 13. We had tries from Subun Kosi and Luquanyo Am, and they gave the host a 14 point lead after a very powerful, good first half. So that's rugby for you. And don't forget, South Africa are the champions after winning the World Cup in 2019. They've not really played matches. And this game was uh, really hampered by uh, lots of positive COVID-19, uh, you know, tests in the camp. And they were not without, without Captain Sia Kolisi, who is still isolating due to coronavirus. In fact, the camp was so depleted that the South African director of sport, uh, the rugby and their coach, Razia Rasmus, was the water boy to this team. But they still beat the British and Irish Lions 17 to 13. Not a bad one for them. We'll see how it goes for the... Uh, yes, yeah, Springboks in the coming days away from the world of rugby. So South Africa is still doing well in rugby. Let's talk about transfers now. Now, remember Italy, they won the cup. Yeah. And their goalkeeper, that's Juan Luigi Danorama, he's moved from AC Milan to PSG. So there you have it. Juan Luigi Danorama is now a PSG goalkeeper just days after leading Italy to Euro 2020 final. He's 22 years of age. Can you imagine? So he started playing for at a young age. In fact, he's had 33 international caps for Italy at the age of 22. So this guy is going to be there for a long time. But he's now joined PSG. Not a bad one for him since uh, leaving, joining AC Milan and made over 251 appearances from the age of 16. Now, away from uh, Danorama, he's a goalkeeper. One of the greatest players in the world who plays for Barcelona and he's from Argentina. He needs your introduction. Lionel Messi. This might come as sad news or good news. Messi is staying at Barcelona. You know, it's surprising, right? After all the legal battle, back and forth, are you staying, are you going? He just won the Copa America last week at Argentina. So we heard he spent a five-year contract with Barcelona, which means at the age of, uh, age of 34, Messi will get half of his salary. Half of his salary to stay at Barcelona. We're asking why. He could have walked away on the free and gotten double times that at another club. So you have to say, perhaps the questions will go to this man, Lionel Messi, to say his future. So he's staying at Barcelona. He will be there for the next five years. And away from that, let's go straight to some basketball news now. The Milwaukee Bucks were led by the Nigerian Greek. Yes, Ati Tokumbo, that dunk was a heavy one for them. They beat in uh, the likes of uh, the Phoenix Suns uh, of 109 uh, to 103 to now tie 2-2. Uh, in the, uh, in, well, uh, yes, the NBA Finals, uh, that man, Chris Middleton, made 40 points uh, for the Milwaukee Bucks, which means Game 5 will be on Saturday in the home ground of Phoenix. So congratulations to Chris Middleton for really partnering at the Tacumbo as they beat that team and it's now 2-2 in that one. So there you have it. There will be a lot to come later in the world of sports. All right, and uh, we have come to the end of the program for today. That's Breakfast Central on mm. New Central. We will be here again tomorrow by 8 a.m. West African time. On behalf of myself and Alisa and the yeah. production team, we're saying have a lovely day. Bye-bye. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye -bye.